maybe I love my job so much because when I get to go to work and basically get shocked into oblivion with some of the crap I see on a daily basis that's just like <clears throat> jars you awake with all sorts of uh, weird hormones and chemicals and stuff. Like every single day seriously you guys got to do this to me we have some crappy stuff going on and it's because you don't understand basic base like fifth grade science stuff here and i want to show you some fifth grade science and how that applies to having a really good roof on your house let's see this right here so for some perspective this is a, a dormer on the front of the house, like that. And this roof plane, the porch, you know, you have a lower pitch, and then it's gonna go into a steeper pitch where those meet, that's the transition. And this is sidewall flashing, where the roof meets the wall. And look at this. You can see, basically, this stops an eighth of an inch behind that one and then it's just nothing back there. So let's talk about the science. This piece right here, it's really, it, it's good. It looks good, it's, at least it's there, but they had no screws in it. And see this? That paint has wore off because this panel has been moving over the years and it's wore that paint off. So that's uh, about 3 8 of an inch. See this one right there? All that paint got wore off over the years as these panels expand and contract with the heat and the cold. When it's hot, they get bigger. When it's cold, they shrink. And that applies strategically to, let's get all this crap out of here. When you put caulking on your roof like that, and then this metal starts to move, expand and contract, what's it doing? It's stressing that caulking and then it's gonna pop it like it did here, okay? And what you wanna do when you use caulking is make sure that the metal around the caulking is not going to be moving and that it instead expands in different directions. So you wanna keep that stationary so that the caulking doesn't get stressed. So what I would've done is made sure we screwed this panel into the ribs and then I also like to put screws together where the metal actually overlaps to make sure that those two pieces get locked together. In addition, like this piece should have come back up here and actually had a bend in it. You can't overlap it like an eighth of an inch like that and expect it to not leak. So um, in short, like having an elementary understanding of some of these um, scientific processes, it really actually helps a lot with the quality of your workmanship. So if you understand that, you're going to spend almost the same amount of time on this piece compared to what's done right here, except that caulking's not going to break in the first couple years and then cause a leak. And that's the difference between uh, a roof that lasts five years or 10 years and a roof that's going to last 25 to 30 years and it looks the same same exact materials except one lasts a lot longer and you do not want to be spending the same amount of money to get a roof that's only going to last you five or ten years and then you got to make a bunch of repairs or buy a new roof that is not what we want none of us want that and so just uh I don't know, pick a good roofer for Pete's sake and like don't always go for the cheapest bid because most of the time, like I don't actually think these guys were roofers. I think they were more like just handymen or like builders that thought they can roof and there's a lot of those out there. Pick somebody who's actually a roofer who's um, designated his brand and his life to learning and mastering one thing because there's enough in roofing to keep a guy busy on top of his toes doing a good job just in this one trade uh, you don't have to be throwing in a ton of other trades to that as well um, I lost my train of thought Rogers yelling at me so anyway um, 
Science is really cool and it helps us be better at our jobs.